Considering how long basketball has been popular in the States, you'd think that NBA and WNBA fans would, by now, be open to the idea of legends retiring. But nope, every retirement hurts the same, as fans realize that they'll never be able to see their favorite players take part in the league again. Hey everyone, welcome back to our YouTube channel. Today we're talking about the legacy of Sue Bird in the WNBA. Let's start by looking back at her career and all she's achieved. We mentioned WNBA fans being sad over the retirement of Sue Bird, right? Well, sad doesn't even begin to describe the pain and melancholy so many fans are currently going through. She is the WNBA, said one fan in their comments about Bird's retirement. Everyone knew what to expect when they saw Sue Bird. Everyone knew that whenever they'd put on a game in which Bird was involved, they were in for a treat. They knew that they were in for an offensive masterclass. The masterclass that has led to her being one of the biggest WNBA stars of all time. The numbers don't even begin to describe her overall legacy in the sport though. She's much bigger than her astronomically high game numbers. What makes Bird really special though is her unrivaled impact on the women's game. The WNBA would now forever be divided in two periods, one before Sue Bird and one after her. And that's fully a testament to her legacy. Bird's legacy in in her own words. We can wax lyrical and praise the on-field genius that Sue Bird is, but it's quite apparent that the legend knows her status in the women's game and in Seattle Storm, too. After her final game, she was full of praise for the youngsters coming through at Seattle Storm. She compared the current state of Storm to its state in 2002, when she herself was a youngster coming through. She mentioned how special it was that the players who are now coming through can take the torch when it comes to representation presenting both Seattle Storm and the U.S. basketball team. Upon commenting on her own legacy, she said that she knows that she's become synonymous with Seattle Storm. She understands that she's now a role model for all young basketball players looking to be a part of the WNBA, but she also thinks that it's important that they follow their own paths. She also tried to keep the spotlight away from her and talked about how basketball is a team sport in the end. It's important to recognize the people who have been on the back end within the Seattle Storm. I'm just that one person, she said, highlighting the importance of recognizing that basketball will be nothing without a whole team of capable people working together to achieve success. Now, onto her crazy numbers. Bird's not only one of the most influential WNBA players of all time, but she's also one of the best of all time. Often there's a big debate over which player is the GOAT who can take the mantle as the greatest the sport has ever seen. On the men's side of things, there's contenders like LeBron James, Michael Jordan, Shaq, and Kobe Bryant. On the women's side, Sue Bird is undoubtedly up there in the conversation alongside legends like Tarasi. What's really special about Bird is that her numbers are not just limited to assists or baskets. She does them both and she does them spectacularly. She was recently crowned as the second player ever to hit 1,000 three-pointers in the WNBA and her ability as a shooter is really not up to debate anymore. Think that's the extent of her abilities? It would be an unbelievable feat if that was her only achievement, but she's got a ton more to showcase. Bird's the undisputed assist queen in WNBA. No one even comes close to her. She's also amazingly talented at creating devastating partnerships with her fellow teammates. I'm sure Seattle fans would love to tell you about her and Natasha Howard and how they together absolutely destroyed teams teams that had stood in their way. All things, of course, have to come to an end. Bird's career may be over after 20 glorious years, but her numbers would always speak for themselves. She'll always have the Seattle fans ready to support her because she's given them the best 20 years of their team. Next up, Bird on her evolution as a player. One of the most interesting parts of analyzing any legend of the game is seeing how they've evolved into different, better players. As players age, they change into smarter versions of themselves. It's usually seen that they become slower, less agile, and maybe a little weaker in their jumps. This is, of course, normal because younger players are in better physical shape. What older players lack in physical strength, they make up for in their understanding of the game. The truly elite players, when coming into the final seasons of their game, almost become coaches on the pitch. Having an unrivaled understanding of how the game moves, they become smarter players 
who can outplay opponents with their brains instead of their bodies. We saw exactly this happen with Sue Bird as she approached the twilight years of her career. She may have become a little slower and a bit more patient, though she still was lightning quick in transition, she was able to very much outplay her opponents through smarter techniques. I've been trying the no look more, she said, when talking about how she now bypasses defenses for assists. A lot of players try to do fancy things like not looking for the hell of it, to just look cool in the post game pictures. Not Sue Bird. She believes that everything needs to be calculated. In her interview, she even mentioned that whatever she does, it's to make sure that a good pass through is provided. What's a good pass? Bird has a very simple answer. For her, a good pass is one which doesn't affect the receiver's plans at all. A good pass facilitates the receiver and doesn't make them change what they were doing. You must be asking, how does one do a good pass then? Bird believes it's all about being quicker than the defense. This quickness doesn't just apply physically, but mentally too. She thinks it's very important to know what the defense will do next and beat them to it and squeeze the ball through. Now for other news from the WNBA world. First up, Brittany Griner at the center of heated tension between Moscow and Washington. In one of the craziest stories of all time, Brittany Griner, the eight-time WNBA All-Star player and two times Olympic gold medalist, found herself in some muddy waters with the Russian airport police. You must be wondering what could have possibly gone wrong for Griner to be caught and detained by the airport police. Well, as it turns out, she was caught having cannabis on her in vape canisters. What's even crazier is that not only was she caught for it, she even admitted to having the cannabis on her. Her plea states that she had hastily put the cannabis in her vape containers, but she didn't have any malicious intent. Her lawyers also provided written proof that Griner was prescribed the medicine as part of pain treatment. Moving on, the Biden administration's plan to bring Brittany Griner home. This might be one of the craziest WNBA stories of all time, and it seems like it'll go on for some time. Griner was given a nine-year sentence, essentially ruling her out of the WNBA for the foreseeable future. Later, the co-counsel revealed that the punishment Griner received was rather harsh, as people with similar offenses usually get around five years of prison. This statement angered a lot of WNBA and Griner fans. That's not the only thing making WNBA fans angry, though. At the time of arrest, Griner was considered one of the best players in the league. She was an instrumental asset to her team, Phoenix Mercury. Of course, there's pressure from the team to bring Griner back to the States, too. All of this led to a lot of pressure on the Biden administration to bring Brittany Griner home. As a response to the pressure, the Biden administration was forced to take drastic measures, which they probably would not take in any other circumstance. In a strange turn of events, the U.S. State Department first of all claimed that Griner was wrongfully detained and requested that she's sent back. This claim was rejected rather sharply by Russia. Now, this next turn in the story may shock you. The U.S. government publicly claimed that they had made a proposal to bring Griner home alongside an American convicted in Russia for espionage. There was no elaboration made, but it seems like the proposal included a very infamous Russian in American custody. It's reported that the U.S. government agreed to let Victor Boot go to Russia. If you're not aware, Victor Boot was nicknamed the Merchant of Death. Behind this scary name is an arms dealer serving 25 years in prison. That's a wrap for this video. What do you think of Sue Bird's illustrious career? Do you think Griner's arrest is unfair? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.